What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today we are finally taking a look at the Asus ROG Ally. If you guys know me, I'm a huge handheld gamer. It's my favorite way to game. And I got a lot of thoughts on this guy. First off, I gotta say, when Asus dropped this thing, mind blown. I love the whole idea of having Windows 11 on a handheld device. Now, let's be real. We're all going to be comparing this guy to the Steam Deck. Some might be wondering, how's it stack up against something like the Switch? But the Steam Deck is its real competitor here. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I kinda like this more. From the very first time I saw this, I thought it looked really cool. As you can see, like this thing screams awesome. You got the RGB circles around the thumbsticks. Uh, the overall design looks really clean. It's actually pretty comfortable to hold in the hand. You got your extra buttons in the back. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw all the press images, this strip that they have in the back here, I thought it was RGB too. It just has like this prism effect to it. So when light hits it, you see different colors. And also the same for these. These are just like stickers with like a prism effect. So those aren't RGB, but like, you know, this is enough. We don't need too many things draining the battery. Colored buttons on the sides. Uh, it pretty much has everything you're gonna need. It's smaller than the Steam Deck by quite a bit, actually. We've got the Steam Deck over here. And you can just kind of see it for yourself. It is a much smaller device. I got some customizations on my Steam Deck. Shout out to Zach from Jerry Rig Everything. It's actually pretty dang durable too. We got some battle scars. This thing fell out of our car. Well, we did, we were doing like the road trip video. Oh, yeah. Fell out the car. We got a couple of nicks, but it hit concrete pretty hard. And we only got nicks on the plastic. The screen was fine. So if durability matters to you at all, this took an extremely hard fall and honestly, doesn't have too much to show for it. Up top, we've got some interesting stuff. So we have our power button over here, which also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Uh, so when you turn it off and you wanna log back in, just turn it on, it'll read and it'll log you in. So you got that Windows Hello feature built right into that button. Very cool. Next to that, we've got some of our LED indicators, our volume controls, which are very nice and easy to press, our USB-C, and a proprietary port here. So if you wanna use one of Asus's like eGPUs, you can go ahead and plug it in. A micro SD card slot and a headphone jack. Now word on the street is that the micro SD card slot is, they've been getting some slack for this micro SD card slot because some people have been running into temperature issues where this thing gets really hot and it basically renders the micro SD card slot useless. I haven't encountered that. I honestly don't even really have anything on my card if I'm being honest with you guys. So it isn't a feature I've run into any issues with yet, um, but I've been able to access the SD card whenever I've wanted. But yeah, those are all of the things. You've got some extra buttons here in the back if you feel like being a pro and napping some extra buttons to there. But overall, it feels very comfortable to use as a gamer. One thing I personally noticed with my unit was with these face buttons, I found that they stick sometimes. I don't know if that's just mine or what. Like, oh, look, it's sticking right now from me just pressing that. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this X button, I just unlodged it. And it's actually really annoying. I, at first I was like, yo, this thing, not starting off on the right foot. But aside from that, the overall gaming experience, pressing the buttons, everything feels pretty good, feels normal. So we know all about this thing physically with the buttons and everything. But now we gotta talk about this big old screen right here. It's a seven inch display, 1080p, 120 hertz, touch screen. So it's pretty much everything you would want. It's an IPS panel, looks really, really good. I gotta say it looks quite a bit better than the Steam Deck screen. Uh, so I've been very happy with the visual aspect of this and supporting 120, that's pretty huge for a handheld. Shout out to Asus for doing a really good job with the screen. I personally really, really like it. Now, let's talk about what's inside, right? So we'll throw up the specs over here. You guys know I'm not a big spec guy. And for those of you out there who aren't familiar with the AMD Ryzen Z1 series, which is the processor, it's actually really good. I've got the extreme version and anything that I've thrown at this has worked out pretty well. I haven't really come into any issues from a performance perspective. Uh, so I've been very happy on that end. And what's nice is that with this being a Windows device, 
uh, you can pretty much do anything you want on the Windows end here as well. So not only can you game portably, but if you wanted to hook a monitor up to this thing, uh, it's got the performance to run whatever you want to do on Windows. Well, not whatever you want to do on Windows, but for the standard everyday person, you can do web browsing, applications, game. Right from this device, this is basically a portable PC and it's absolutely amazing. We should see, we should see how Adobe Premiere We'll, 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 we'll throw up Adobe Premiere and some B-roll and let you guys know how it does and like a judge says right here so you guys can see. But yes, the specs definitely support this thing as a handheld system as well as a full-blown PC if you'd like. Like I said, I do have the eGPU that Asus sells uh, and I've been able to dock this up to a monitor and the eGPU use it like a full-blown computer you kind of forget that this thing even exists so if you want to have something that can be your pc and your gaming console fully supports that i love that this thing is running windows 11 and that dock that i've been using isn't the only way to like achieve the full-blown pc experience uh, you can do that with like usb hubs and that kind of thing as well if you guys are interested in seeing like an accessories video for something like this let me know with a comment down below and, and you can do a lot of this. You can do similar stuff on the Steam Deck. You can get Windows 11 on here if you're savvy enough. Uh, but I love that right out the gate, that's what you get on this guy. You can finagle this, you can make it work. You can even use this as a PC if you'd like. You can dock it up using the USB-C port. Just use a dock and then you can kind of get a similar experience right out the box. You can make that happen over here. So I'm very happy about that. But what that also means is compatibility, which is like the most important part here is amazing with Windows 11. And with this button right here, we can open up Ace's Armory Crate. And basically this is like where your game library is. And you can see with the different games that I've got here, you can see the different platforms that you're actually gonna play them on. So Steam, so all those Steam games are gonna be running on this more compatibility than this offers, which is kind of wild, but you can play all of them here. Uh, you even have Xbox Game Pass on this, but the support for playing on like these different platforms is there right out of the box. Uh, and all of the games, they work on it. Now I'm not saying all the games, I bet you that somebody's like, oh no, but my, <laughs> my XYZ game doesn't work well. I don't know, man. The compatibility here though has been stellar. So we talked a little bit about the specs, we talked about different platforms and being able to have all that, but what's it like to just straight up game on it, right? Guys, I have very little complaints. So some of the games that I've been playing, I've been able to play just fine. Uh, some of the more taxing games, you gotta dial the settings down quite a bit. Like Yakuza, like a dragon, been trying to get into that a little bit more. That's not one of the games you really wanna push the settings on and honestly, when it comes to these handheld systems that can play AAA titles, you don't really want to push them to crazy settings. You want to kind of keep them down, like maybe like the medium kind of settings so you can get the best performance to battery life ratio. Uh, battery life <laughs> is what you'd expect. It's pretty meh. But if you don't run this thing at like turbo, like I have it, the fool that I am, then you'll be able to get a lot more time out of it. I probably wouldn't play on the silent mode. Performance, probably the sweet spot, you know? Uh, I like playing on turbo. I'm the kind of guy who always has access to a portable charger, chargers nearby. I'm the charger guy. Uh, so I don't care. I play, at tur I play on turbo all the time. I'm finally <laughs> towards the end of Scarlet Nexus. I feel like I've been talking about Scarlet Nexus for I don't know how long at this point. That game, buttery smooth, flawless, no complaints. And if you wanna do some of like the wild stuff, like get retro games and that kind of thing, emulators, you're gonna have a much easier time doing that on this than something like this guy, where you have to basically make it run like an entirely different operating system. It's, it's a lot more work to make this thing the everything system than I think it's gonna be for this guy. Now I know, listen, Linux users, I know you're like, hey, don't, don't trash my Steam Deck, I love it, I get it. But I'm talking about for the average person who doesn't necessarily have that Linux experience, uh, I think they'll be able to jump into this and have an easier time making this do a little bit more than the standard stuff. 
Now, I'm singing a lot of its praises, but some issues that I've come across, right? One is this thing just, I don't know when this thing wants to go to sleep. Like, that's my biggest issue. I'll turn it off and it just randomly wakes up sometimes. I don't know why, I don't know if it's like, and it's not usually like Windows updates or anything. It'll, like sometimes it just refuses to sleep. When your room is pitch black and you're trying to get some sleep, having these things flashing while you got a sleeping baby, not a good time. I mean, you can bring down the brightness, it's controllable. So check it out, they've got this cool command center where you can basically change a bunch of the stuff here. So resolution, refresh rate, all that. And let's see, LED brightness, this is 66%. This is 100%, 0, 33, 66, 100. But yeah, this whole command center thing is also really cool. It's just really handy. You can also change the control mode. So depending on if you're using Windows at the moment or you're using a, playing a game, you can change how you know the sticks operate and moving the mouse and all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to figure out sleep because with this, I never had that issue. Now, clearly it's not cool that the micro SD card slot can potentially mess up on you. Uh, Asus is aware of that and I think they're going to try and fix it with a software update. Battery life is as bad as you'd expect for a handheld these days, especially one pushing the kind of power that this thing is. The way I play, I'll get like an hour and change. Like this is not gonna last a flight. You know, you can get two hours out of it I think if you're trying to be a little bit more conservative, depending, it all depends on the title. There's so many variables. I think if you're of sane mind, you'll dial down the settings a little bit, get yourself a little extra battery life. But I walk around with portable chargers all day, so I'm not tripping. This thing, I ran into the same issues, terrible battery life. Everyone's like, yo, dial down your settings. I did, helped a lot with the battery life, so kudos to you guys. But yeah, just do the same. This will get better. But the way I play, both battery lives suck. When it comes to the Switch, it's very different. This has much better hardware. It's far more powerful. Um, obviously, it's not gonna have any of those Nintendo games. Like, you're not getting Mario, you're not getting Pokemon on this. Unless you find some kind of emulator, we're not gonna talk about that. This is clearly more powerful than the Switch, but it's not going to be as easy to use. You still gotta figure out on your own how to get your games, which platform you gotta go and pick them up on. So if you gotta go, if you wanna get them from Steam, you gotta, you know, do your research. Like, oh, this is on Steam or this is on Xbox. You, there are different places you gotta pull these games from. Whereas with a Switch, you go to any Best Buy or GameStop, you buy the little cartridge or you go to the Nintendo eStore and boom, you're done. Now, with this power and better screen, all that good stuff, gonna be a little bit more. This thing starts at like 600 bucks, uh, whereas this one starts at 400 bucks. Worth the price difference, I'd say, personally. Uh, at $600, I think this is, I think that's a fair price for this, especially if you go up one, you get the Z1 Extreme, uh, that's gonna run you 699. I personally think this is an easy recommendation if you're familiar with Windows gaming at all or if you're willing to learn uh, from a form factor, performance, overall looks, everything. I feel like it, it checks all of the boxes in a lot of good ways. I'm a believer. So for me personally, right now, this is my handheld of choice. Uh, this is what I always make sure is in my, well, who am I kidding? I'm gonna make sure this and this is in my backpack at all times. Steam Deck, I have not, I honestly have not touched since I got in my hands on this. I honestly just don't see any reason to. But those are my thoughts, you guys. Let me know what you think of the ROG Ally, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, it's your average consumer. Peace. Still gotta finish Star Scarlet Nexus, do you? I'm, I, got, I gotta finish it. I gotta, I'm gonna, I'll get to it.